happy World Menopause Day. I hope you're having a lovely World Menopause Day. I'm here to have a bit of a rant. Um, I'm going to try and make it a bit quicker than my last one because it went on a bit too long. <laughs> I love that we're talking more about menopause. I think the work that has been done by the celebrities in raising awareness is very, very good. I think the fact that it is being discussed in Parliament is a good thing. I think the initiatives that the all party parliamentary group wants to put in place, such as um, a standard menopause health check for women, probably at 45, possibly earlier might be a good idea, is a good thing. What I don't like is the fact that menopause is still being positioned as something totally negative. For those of you that don't know, I was given an early menopause diagnosis at 41. I was trying for another child and it was devastating. I wanted a second child. I'd wanted a second child since the first one was born. It wasn't to be. It didn't happen. Um, and I am now 56. So I am a long time through menopause. And you might think that I see menopause as something negative. You know, it ended my fertility. Yes, it did. But... The end of my fertility has become the most fertile time of my life. And I am fed up to the back teeth of these negative narratives. I cannot bear the menopause as deficiency narrative. I am not deficient. You got that? You got that? I am not deficient in any shape or form. And nobody is going to tell me that I am deficient post-menopause because I have lost hormones that I should have had because I would have died at 52 100 years ago which is bollocks <laughs> I've written about all of this in my book this is my book it's a really good book go and get it magnificent midlife transform your middle years menopause and beyond it is a fallacy that we all used to die five minutes after menopause 100 years ago it's just rubbish as is the figure that was quoted in the all-party parliamentary inquiry report. You think you could trust that, wouldn't you? That nearly a million women have left work because of menopause symptoms. It's bollocks again. <laughs> Sorry, but it really is. And if Gillian Tett, Tate of the Financial Times can say bollocks on telly, I can say bollocks on here. I might get censored, but I don't care. It is a load of bollocks. Um, it was done. It was taken from a research survey done by Booper which is the private um, medical insurance company over here in the UK. And they did a PR survey and they asked a question and they said, have any of these four things stopped, uh, made you leave work in the past? Four things, not just menopause, four different things. And the audience they asked was 18 to 70 spot the deliberate mistake and then they extract they got 40 women said yes to one of these four things which was periods infertility menopause and i can't remember the fourth one that's brain fog for you um, it's just gone i should have prepared before i came on air um and um then they extrapolated it to the whole uk female population 18 to 70 spot the deliberate mistake again not accounting for women who weren't in the workplace or who'd left or retired or between 18 and 70. And then that is the figure that keeps getting repeated over and over and over again. And I had enough of it. Because it's bollocks. <laughs> Perimenopausal rage is a force for good. It's me channeling my perimenopause. Oh, no, not perimenopause. Menopause. Postmenopausal rage. See, the rage bit didn't go away. <laughs> but I'm channeling it in an effective way. I also don't want to be a 240 billion US dollar market opportunity as a menopausal woman. I'm sorry. That is, I think, the figure that the menopause market is supposed to be worth by the year 2030. You know, anybody now, they hear the word menopause it's like dollar signs, pound signs. Dollar signs, pound signs, let's sell, sell, sell. Let's tell them it's something that needs to be fixed. Let's tell them it's going to be terrible and awful and they're going to, it's the gateway. Did you know menopause is the gateway now to Alzheimer's, osteoporosis, heart disease, um, depression, early death? If 
you don't take synthetic hormone replacement therapy. That is the message people are being given. So the women who've had breast cancer and who can't take HRT, they're, they're so scared now. They're so scared. What's going to happen to them if they can't take this wonderful panacea, cures all of everything, and it keeps you young and sexy, HRT? <sighs> Breathe. Have you heard about the whales? The whales, yeah. You have to listen to my podcast with Darcy Stanky if you want to hear about the whales. But the short story is that like women, whales go through menopause. And then when they go through menopause, they are the leaders of their pods, often for up to 50 years post-menopause. They do not shrink into obscurity. It is not the end of their meaningful life. They do not need hormone replacement therapy to keep them young and vibrant. menopausal rage. Ha, 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 ha. Is there anything else I want to complain about? I'm sure I will get to the end of this video and there will be some things that I have not included. Oh, workplace. Yes, workplace. Talked about this on my podcast as well. There are, there is a danger that workplaces are ticking the menopause box and thinking that their work for older women is done. Whereas actually it's gendered ageism that is the bigger issue. And that's the one we need to deal with kiddos because gendered ageism makes everything worse, including menopause, including how we internally feel about ourselves going through menopause because we've been taught it's the end of meaningful life, blah, blah, blah. So we need to make the workplace work better for women so that women don't leave, not in the great ridiculous numbers that some people talk about them leaving in, but in any numbers. We don't want women to leave work full stop because they're too valuable. We are too amazing and valuable and wonderful post menopause. And I want younger women to be prepared, not scared. I want younger women to know that if they burn the candle at both ends, they're going to get into trouble in menopause because that's what happens. And most women get to midlife burnt out. And that is the cost of modern life as well. That's uh, I knew there was something else I'd talk about. The cost of modern life. It's not that we died off, as I said before. It's not that our mothers suffered through menopause and didn't talk about it. I don't actually believe they had such difficult uh, experience. It's the first time that women are all going through this together in the workplace. We eat different things now. We are under much more stress and stress is the elephant in the room. And also weight is another elephant in the room. It's a bit crowded in this room because we've got elephants <laughs> all over the place and whales. Um, we are heavier than previous generations. We eat processed food. Um, there are toxins in our systems. There are hormones in our water from, you know, we are the pill generation. We took the pill. Who knows what the pill did to our hormones? You know, why aren't we asking more questions? We know that um, there are certain things like parabens in products that can mimic the effect of hormones in our bodies. All these things we have such a different environment now than we ever had in the past and we need to be asking questions not just saying give me the hrt put the band-aid on off we go no because if you put the band-aid on it can't breathe you, whatever you've got the wound underneath can't breathe um, and i really believe that menopause symptoms are the canary in the coal mine they are the body's way of telling us that something isn't quite right something needs to change we need to do something differently, okay? So listen to that canary, listen to your body, listen to what she is trying to tell you and go and read my book. Yeah, my book. Listen to my podcast, read some of the articles I've got for you that I've written for you about anything and everything to do with menopause. And this year's theme is cognition and mood. We've got things on perimenopausal rage, back to the rage, <laughs> anxiety, depression, brain fog. So be prepared, not scared. This is a transition. This is a 
tunnel, not a cave. You will get through it. Even if it's really bad, you will get through it. And if it is really bad, then ask yourself, ask your inner mentor up here, why? What's going on? What do I need to change? Because there'll be a reason or there'll be lots of reasons. And we can't just take one thing. Well, we like to want to take the HRT, but there are lots of things that can help. Um, and they're all on my website and in my book and on my podcast. Anyway, happy World Menopause Day. Thank you. If you've got to the end of this and you're still listening to me rant, <laughs> well done. Hang on in there. It's over the rainbow and there are unicorns. <laughs> it's all good. Honestly, trust me. I'm not a doctor. Bye now.